Well, I'll just say, hello, Britain. I'm very sorry that I lost the fight last night, but I can assure you I tried my best. But evidently, the, the, the officials, they thought my best wasn't good enough. Were you hurt any in the fight? Oh, I was hurt plenty, yes. My, these highs will show you that, and my, my hand gave me a lot of trouble when I broke my finger across. And uh, do you hope to get another chance at Lewis? Well, I've been promised a return match within some time next year for the championship. And I think I'll win it. And how soon are you going back to uh, Britain? Well, as, as soon as possible, because to me, Britain is the only country the, in the world. I mean, the valleys we can see up ahead there are the Runda Valleys, South Wales, and on Christy TV, I'm making a documentary on one of Britain's greatest ever heavyweights. And I'm just going to give you a little teaser as I start. I wonder if you can guess who it is. We're going to see a signpost here. And you see that signpost at the top, right there. And it says, Tony Pandy. Can you see that, Tony Pandy? Yeah, and his nickname is the Tony Pandy Terrier. Yeah? Right, well, that's it. That's your clue for now. And um, I met him to the village where he was born, one of the greatest heavyweights. So, um, yeah, it's following the story, but let's see if you can guess for now. Tony Pandy Terrier is to be revealed. Watch this plaque. Have a look, we're in the valleys here. And who lived right here? Who lived right here? Watch this. Of course, that was the great, brilliant Tommy Farr, who had that legendary fight with the longest reigning heavyweight champion of the world, Joe Louis. Name's Joe, you won't know of me, but I'm doing a, I'm doing a little piece on Tommy. The last visit I had you was from Hawkesbury in New Zealand. They said that when he, when he returned, they partied in the town of Tony Pandy in the village. They yeah. partied on it. Oh, there's two or three fars living there now. Are they really? Where you, where you I'm, I'm no. up around the corner, on right. the right side. Right, right. Yeah, so we found um, where Tommy's lived, obviously, and the gentleman who lives there has given me all the efforts he can in the locals in this little tight-knit village in the valleys without going to find his great niece who works in the shop Berkeley's round the corner but they're ever so helpful when you mention Tommy Farr you can see that still still clearly 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 very proud of what he stood for and his efforts and achievements in this tough mining village and from London. Yeah. So we're in we're in South Wales for a few days and um, Tommy's always been close to my heart for his achievements and whatnot. Yeah. You met Tommy yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because he died in England in 1986, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's in the mines at 12. Oh, hello, Steve. Oh, thank you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, good, mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Apparently, when he returned, um, when he returned, place party. Um, a week's jubilation on his father's house has kindly informed me um, that yes, as, but as it reads here, um, he's, he's informed me that in 1965, 70 for May, 31 miners died in a colliery right there. What a tragedy. Um, unbelievable. <laughs> These men that go down on shafts and things and these little cages and they would go through holes less than three feet you know in depth crawl through and knock away these men were brave just just going to work horrendous conditions when we think about the health and safety rules we have in place today but we, we have to be mindful of course Tommy Farr was part of this colliery he's a miner here but we have to be mindful yeah. In fact, Joe Louis said at the press conference, what we have now, the big press conference, of course it was a press conference then, he said, how have you got these marks around you? It's quite dry, um, sense of humour. Tommy Farr, he said, uh, yeah, he said, I was fighting on the circus against bears. But in fact, the, 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 the sort of bruising marks that stayed with him, the black bruising marks, were going through small holes, digging for coal. Yeah, but we do have a complete sense of... Um, what these boys went through and uh, we have to have a thought and prayer for them. And these were some of the conditions, have a look. Oh, there's another there's some, is, is a picture of of the uh, mine and arguably, arguably one of the saddest things here 
this colliery went on from late 1890 something approximately started, went on to 1966. But how sad, it closed in 66 and this horrendous tragedy of 31 men lost their lives in 65. I can't help but think, why didn't they close the damn thing in 64? When I, mean, I call it a damn thing, it obviously put bread and, um, you know, put, put, fed people for many, many years. So it wasn't an income, but a horrendous way to get, a tough, tough way to get that income. And you can see why um, these men were tough fighting men, you know. Going to work was tough. You just going to work was a fight. So you can see why these villages bred men like Tommy Farr, for sure. Mm. The police, the police the stadium it was, it's a brilliant seat. Yeah. I mean, he was the old bloody... Well, from the fairground, really, innit? You know, right, yeah. Fought in the stalls, you know. Boxing took, took, took them on. Did he work in Cambria? Yes, yeah, yeah. Till yeah. 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 it shut, I am. Ah, no, he's an ex-miner. Well, you used to have to walk some things to walk. We were good on the shaft there, yeah? Yeah. And we had to walk to, to Nant Gwyn. And Penny Drive. Right, so that's a mile in a bit then, innit? <laughs> yeah, just yeah. walking, yeah. 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 And uh, describe what the conditions like down there. I mean, Rough. you clearly got used to it. It must be a tough place to work. Hard. Really hard, dirty. Yeah, it's scary sometimes. Have you ever had a scary? That's for the 14th, you did. Oh, my family were like that. Oh, that was it? Yeah. Have you ever had a scary? Well, like I said, they went to the army. When they left school, they just worked in the cop then for a couple of years. And they volunteered and went to the army. What was the conditions like down there in terms of would people get in each other's way? Would there be a lot of anger at night? Or would they get on swimmingly well? The camaraderie, the bloody community, this bit especially. Yeah. There's a, there's a community pit, a whole set of real murky in here, yeah. so you knew everybody. Uh, yeah. So you, like you said, not much animosity, you all no, got on friendly. None at all, none at all. The only animosity I had was the fight with the Yeah. You fought for your money on a Friday. God, that, that was what it was like, wasn't it? Not like going to work on a computer today. Oh! For some people. <laughs> <laughs> you just ran a We didn't, we didn't get... I'm at the final resting place of the great Tommy Farlock in his valleys, beloved valleys where he was born and raised. Yeah, um, along with his mother and father, respectively, his father George, a uh, hard knuckle fight man himself. And um, I'm sure to be that good, he probably had fighting ancestry on both sides. Yeah, um, what do we know? So we do, we, we do a bit, we've been to his village, we've met friends, we've met the, 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 the um colliery, the coal mine and all the bits that go with it, still very proud of him. But let's talk a bit about his fighting accolade. Tommy Farr fought the best Americans out there. Yes, he fought Maxi Bear who killed a fighter and crippled a fighter. The great hard punching Maxi Bear but he couldn't hurt um, Welshman Tommy Farr and Clyde Bell, no way. Um, close decision fight and a lot of people believe that if you fought Americans on British soil on home soil, he may not have lost to any of them. He fought the World Heavyweight Champion James J. Brannock, the brilliant James Brannock. Um, again, another close points decision. But his probably finest hour um, was against the longest reigning heavyweight champion, I think it was 11 year, 8 months, Joe Louis, the Brown Bomber, arguably the greatest heavyweight of all time. Yes, the boy from the little village here in the valleys went over, fought him in the Yankee Stadium, didn't get the verdict. Many believe he, he did, and if it had been on home soil, he would have. Um, great, great fighting man. Started his trade on the boxing booth, age just 12. But um, yeah, one of, one of Britain's best ever heavyweights, without any doubt, without any doubt. Okay, he didn't claim the title. He didn't have four bouts like they have now and all this stuff. They have one champion, was the supreme, arguably the best ever champion. He went over there on a boat, took it to the Yankee Stadium, gave all. In fact, the American crowd were actually on far side and many believe they have won the fight. That we can't say, but what we do know, he put up a great, great performance. And it's been, an, I've got a really, really lovely, warming uh, reception for the people I've met here. And he's still very, very much in the people's mind. So um, I'm gonna uh, go back later uh, to one of his local pubs, the clubs, have a tipple on the man, if I can, look at his photos and that way it'll just be a little toast to his village and his people. But um, I'd just like to sign off and a prayer for the great man and his parents right here. Um, a Welshman, I do not qualify as. But a British man, I do qualify as. And here rest one of the great British 
Warriors, Tommy Farr. God bless you and thanks for your effort. Tommy Farr, what made you think you were win? I'm 23, the same age as you, and I've had over 3,000 rounds of actual fighting and never taken the count. You've only had less than 200 rounds of boxing and you've been knocked out. All Britishers the world over can rely on my manager and me to win or die in the attempt.